is Jesus' atonement, atonement meaning what Jesus did primarily on the cross and his life, death, and resurrection, but primarily what he was doing on the cross, is it limited in any way? This is the classical debate between those who call themselves Calvinists and those who call themselves Arminians. It, it's a debate that's happened throughout church history a lot, but it really came to a head in the early 1600s when people who followed the teaching of a guy named Jacob Arminius, after Arminius died, they came out specifically in the country Holland, and they presented five things that they thought the church was teaching wrongly. And then people who followed kind of in the line of a guy named John Calvin and who believed specific things that he emphasized concerning what the scripture says, they got together for over two years, seven years later, after those original Arminian guys had presented their five points of Arminianism. The Calvinist type people came together and they met over an extended period of time, hundreds of times they met, and they put forward what's called the Canons of Dort, because they were in Dort, where they wrote them. So they called them the Canons of Dort, and they argued something different than the Arminians. Arminians argue certain things concerning the cross, certain things concerning free will. Calvinists argue different. But this is a classic debate. So when we ask the question, is Jesus' atonement limited? Our answer is probably, surely not, right? That's a, it's a really poor choice of words to call the Calvinistic position of the cross limited atonement. It's a poor, cho poor choice of words, and that's not what they originally called it, but somewhere in the last hundred years, someone thought it would be really fun to take the doctrines of grace or those five points of the canons of Dort from the 1600s and make them into an acronym called TULIP. So that's not originally how they wrote it, but someone said that'd be fun. It'd be easy to remember. Tulip. So we got total depravity, unconditional election. What are we going to call this? Uh, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the saints. Isn't that nice and neat and pretty? Tulip. Beautiful flower. Easy way to remember theology. It's not the best name for what actually is meant by what we would call limited atonement, and for this reason. Both Calvinists and Arminians on both sides of the debate, hear me, both of them limit the atonement. And what I mean is this, Arminians, the Arminian position limits the power or the effect of what Jesus did on the cross. The Calvinist position limits the scope, the intent of what Jesus did on the cross. The Arminian position is that Jesus' cross, what he was doing there, was putting all people in all time in a savable state. He did something to make men able to be saved. The Calvinist position is that on the cross, Jesus, once for all, actually accomplished salvation of all of his people in all time. Not every single person that's ever lived, but his people throughout history that he would bring to faith. Those are the two positions. So the Arminian position limits the power because it says it's meant for everyone, but not everyone's saved. It's like, so Jesus died for people that will not be saved. And the Calvinist position is that, no, every single person Jesus atoned for will be saved because he stood in their place. Those are the basic things. And so this is why the question, is Jesus atonement limited, or even the doctrine called limited atonement, phrasing it like that, it's not that helpful. Both sides limit it, one in the scope and one in the power and the effect.